Hi there. In this video, we will be opening up this HP ZBook 15 because some uh, anti calcar or cleaning liquid or something highly corrosive uh, ended up on the display and leaked behind this frame. So, possibly corroding uh, something in this area. So, there's no much image in the display itself. I'm not even going to power it on until I actually see what's uh, in there because I don't want uh, any more damage than uh, already is probably. So first thing, these uh, are some tiny stickers on both sides and behind them we should have screws like that one right there. So let's get to it and hopefully save this laptop. First signs of trouble on the screw itself, it's corroded. So it's quite clear something bad <laughs> happened to it. Yeah, I'm expecting quite a lot of damage in this area. Hopefully at least at uh, cable level we are okay. But uh, more than the cable I'm expecting uh, not to be okay in here. But hey, we'll see quite soon. This one is uh, normal, so probably corrosion more in that area, but you never know uh, how liquid uh, went around. Now let's see about this, where is the edge, I think around here we have the level of the edge, quite hard to show, but here. So this is we, where we want uh, some tools. Hopefully I have some plastic tools around. If not, a small flathead screwdriver. But uh, that might damage the plastic a tiny bit. But many times uh, I've seen plastic tools are just not strong enough to open uh, these things up. So I'm doing it uh, slowly with this flathead and see what I get. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. First impression, really, really doesn't. This could have lots of clips all around. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Yeah. Uh, this somehow is beginning to work. Yes, you can see marks, but uh, this is creating the marks, but at the same time, it seems the paint itself is quite weak. So uh, yeah, if you have a good plastic tool, use that. Uh, I really don't actually have two good plastic tools, so I am using that. When this will be closed, I can just put a bit of uh, marker in this uh, because it's right on where the metal is at 90 degrees. So yeah, it's beginning to open up slowly. Maybe at this point it will even work with the fingernail and it will. So uh, no more marks, uh, hopefully from now on. Well, doesn't really work. Yeah, it does. So open it up and uh, hope for the best. Again, if you have plastic tools, but good ones, try to use that. Sometimes they work, sometimes I, I just need to use something like this. So yeah, it is what it is. This area right here is a bit more annoying, harder to, to properly reach, but it is coming apart and yikes. So that was uh, just a bit of uh, corrosion in this corner, but the real corrosion is in this area. Okay, but we must dig deeper. Maybe even behind the wires we got some corrosion. Behind the panel actually, so... Next step at this point. Uh, remove the panel screws themselves and get the panel out of the frame to inspect don't lose the screws keep track of them 
to inspect the back of the panel and the connections themselves. If we are really, really lucky, there's just a tiny bit of corrosion which can be cleaned and we can save the panel. If the connection is fully damaged, uh, the panel is gunky and we need a new one. New one for us, maybe even second hand, but for new for this uh, particular laptop, that's for sure. Now, uh, I kind of need to see, oh, please tell me this isn't a glued in planner. That would be really bad. No, it's not glued in. Okay. Are you still looking? Kind of nervous of what I find in here. Okay. Wait, this doesn't look bad. I'm lifting this tape on the back of the display itself. So I properly reach the connector. Yeah, something was at this level also. I must bring some light and investigate really, really well. Hmm. Let's see what type of mechanism this has for unlatching because it seems it has something quite interesting. Yep. So this needs to be lifted. And now in theory, this can be pulled. Quite a fair bit of corrosion on the connector itself. So presumably cable plus display are gangsky. That kind of sucks. Double the trouble. Trying to get under the black EMI tape so I can inspect the board and see if there's any more damage maybe to clean it if uh, it helps. But the EMI tape is kind of cooked by heat and time and it will not come apart. So my only way is to cut it along the edge so I can reveal the PCB and hopefully fix something in here. And it doesn't look that bad. So the corrosion is limited to this particular area. But uh, yeah, brush, alcohol, lots of elbow grease and hopefully the contacts uh, themselves are still there just with a layer of corrosion on top because if they are corroded through then uh, bye bye display panel panel is looking better the connections are still there on the inside of it uh, really hard to tell but i think it's okay cleaned uh, the best that i could the cable I'm 99.9% .9 sure I saved, so worst case we are changing a panel, not a panel plus a cable. Did my best to also clean uh, this, there are some marks remaining, but uh, it will not corrode, also cleaned the cable as best as I could. So in theory at this point, quick assembly, try to power it on and see what we get. If we are lucky, it powers on normally and we are done. If not, a new panel most likely. Nope, not really. Okay, story time. While trying to power it on, I saw a quick flash. Like, Pup. then I initially instantly powered it off. Looked around, hey, but there's nothing. Then looked a bit better. Do you see? These contacts are shorter than they should be. So basically corrosion has gone inside of this board probably shorting some layers in there or something. This thing doesn't power on anymore. So it's kind of gunsky. If I look at the pins, we can see this pin right here, the second one that uh, overheated, probably some kind of uh, power, maybe I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, so more of the story, maybe I should have stopped bought a new display but they are kind of expensive tried with the new display and hope for the best if it still wasn't working then i maybe could have tried to sell the new display cheaper but yeah so at this point i'm not sure if the rest of the laptop was still outputting an image in here and only the display was 100 percent a problem or because of, corro of uh, corrosion 
It was damaged even deeper in the display because even if it was not a dead short, as long as corrosion was in this area, it was shorting pins between them. <sighs> this is kind of annoying. The fact that this isn't powering on anymore, it's uh, the annoying part. And I'm going to try and open it further. Maybe it blown a fuse somewhere, but even if I find the blown fuse and it does power on, I have no way of knowing that it can still output an image in here. And I'm starting to see other bad signs inside this laptop. <laughs> uh, these were not populated and this one is still badly corroded. I think it's corroded to the point that it's not even making a contact or maybe even shorting to the ones right next to it. So does this mean that some uh, something was in here? Look at this. There's a big spot right here. At this point in time, I literally removed every single screw on this uh, laptop. <sighs> and I'm starting to separate uh, the layer where the keyboard is. But I think I need to first somehow remove the keyboard. And as far as I could see, we have a screw here for the keyboard, we had one here, and uh, somewhere uh, there was another one, but I cannot see it. Nope, I think uh, those were the screws. Uh, I'm going to try and push in here. I think we actually have full access to the keyboard right in here, in this area where maybe a fan was designed to be at one point. I have no clue what's up with that round area. Yep, I was right. This was the area where to push, but I literally needed to push like I was trying to break apart this keyboard. So that's a bit weird. And now we simply... <laughs> simply, but it's not that simple. We pull it out with our fingers underneath it, but it's... Ah, this is... You can see, it even popped the clips from underneath it instead of just lifting the corner. It was so badly hooked in there i don't know why basically we should be getting the top of it out but yeah it went out finally and now we should pull it from underneath but uh, yeah and in here we have the connections which we will undo lift in there lift in there the black plastic and that should release our keyboard did the other one clip in? Yeah, it was again latching in. Hey, still not coming out. Did some corrosion also reach this? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, man. This, this is weird. New torque screw has prevent, prevented, no, has presented itself to us. Uh, hopefully the last one and now we can actually lift all of this but I think it started clipping at the bottom while I was playing with everything uh, safe to say that the battery is not in the laptop when I'm doing uh, all of this work that uh, would be uh, stupid and we also need to unhook the connector for this flex foil and man these are big connectors it kind of shows the edge age sorry of this particular laptop oh that one cannot be unclipped that easily whoa really how, how did they think about this and it's unclipped so now in theory we are Free to lift, are we free to lift? Okay, not good to drop this. No, something is still holding us. Hey, where are you guys? You didn't really lift, why didn't you really lift? Did I unhook them? No, I didn't. Ay, 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 ay. This is fun. This is lots of fun. Okay, now this should be unhooked. And we have access to everything. 
Let's take a really, really good look. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Don't see corrosion, which is a bit here, but that shouldn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I was thinking maybe in the display connected connector area or something, but I don't see it. Which is good, but does it matter at this point? This thing is still not powering anymore. So I kind of need to see this might be the power in connector, but I have absolutely no access to it unless I remove the huge heatsink. So heatsink removal time other torx screws get everything out and take a better look at the board in this area see if anything that popped could be in there and it's replaceable but even then what do i do order a new display and hope for the best because i have no way of knowing it's if this thing is still outputting video in here after all of that corrosion was in this area and kept things shorted looking around corrosion on the gpu itself those pins are shorted by corrosion so most likely this thing wasn't outputting an image to our display or maybe it wasn't outputting what it should have been outputting so at this point i decided to completely remove the motherboard to be able to see also the back side where it's covered because something is telling me there's more hidden corrosion uh, somewhere but this is not a repair friendly laptop it's many many layers many many screws pcb with weird shape this protrusion right here it's yikes lots of ribbon cables this is not repair friendly at all so yeah, basically at this point I'm removing all the screws that uh, I can see apart from, actually no, sorry, even these ones because I want to try and clean that corrosion. Although if I cannot find the fuse or something that's blown, I don't know what HP was going for here, but even this tiny piece that's basically the light guide spitting out the light in this area right here, it's really hard to remove. So, uh, yeah, you kind of wiggle it around, try to get it out like this. It's a pain. Everything in this laptop is a pain. And I'm not showing exactly how I take out every single screw because it's basically at the level you see a screw, you take it out. I don't think any screws will be left standing. Uh, maybe something like this, for example. They just hold this bracket onto the board, but... They don't attach, uh, presumably, the board deeper to the case itself, but maybe, again, these two, if I don't need to remove the, this, but I want to remove it to see how bad the corrosion is in there. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the screws, everything that I see, they go. I need, I need to get them out. Not the ones from the hinge, that doesn't have anything to do with it, but the ones from the board, they are going out. Okay, this is reaching levels of stupid that I didn't think it are possible. So I need to remove this speaker in order to uh, remove the motherboard. And then I need to remove everything. So including the bezels, the bezels, the hinges and this bezel. Yeah, at the end even bezel. Because the, this is under the hinge. And the motherboard is under everything in that corner. So it's really HP. What? Is this some kind of uh, stupid joke? No, this... <sighs> Normally, old laptops are decently easy to, to repair. But things are a bit bigger, which is okay. Okay, also in this one, these are big. But this one is so complicated, this, uh, compli complicatedly designed that... Yikes. Anyway. Let's continue undoing screws and getting stuff out. Who knows if I can also put it back together. 
found a tiny bit more corrosion and grime right there but this was probably cleanable I don't think anything was affected so this bezel even has screws on the back of it the ones inside were not enough so wow I think I've opened up tens I'm not sure if I have hundreds of laptops but many tens of laptops opened up and repaired but the only one that came close to this one I think was the Lenovo T400 when you wanted to upgrade the CPU that was quite hard to get to but uh, for other things it wasn't as bad is this stuck yeah it's stuck I need to try another tip Ugh. under the bezel even more screws for the hinges yep you know what whatever shorted inside of this thing actually put that in protection mode it wasn't outputting any voltage anymore and i don't think it has a standby or something like that it was just absolutely zero so uh, i unplugged it plugged it back in and now it's outputting 12 and a, uh, 19 and a half volts or something like that so maybe no protection this thing blew up maybe the thing said hey i'm i'm cutting it anyway i'm taking the motherboard out and looking on the other side and cleaning all the corrosion all over it putting everything back in and uh, without connecting anything to the display out see if this thing can still power on that's the important part if this still can power on then but yeah should i buy a new display it's expensive as hell it's half the price of uh, a similarly specced laptop with half a year of warranty i literally cannot get this corner out of here i'm trying to to somehow uh, rotate the motherboard or do whatever i can without breaking it obviously that corner will not get out so how was something like this accepted on the assembly line or for reparability in warranty for example this is stupid it's i cannot put it otherwise it's stupid this whole part of the pcb is stupid ha 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 managed to do it the bios battery was preventing me to lift it enough i was hoping it's enough to get it out of the corner but now the bios battery cable wasn't long enough so now basically i need to somehow lift it like this and get it out so hello motherboard let's take a better look get rid of the corrosion right there I'm going to also get a, this board out and see if there's any corrosion and unpeel this black thing, black uh, insulation, protection, whatever. Make sure that everything is good. And then put it back and... Yikes. Is that only dust or corrosion? Because it seems to be only in that area. Anyway, continue. Also something that I have never seen up until now this type of small capacitors with the cracked paint on them normally they look like this with the paint in okay shape this is cracked so did they overheat over time or it was just a bad batch of paint i think these three components pl1 to 3 uh, maybe are the fuses but they are okay they are not blown because they are directly on the path of the positive uh, 19.5 volts this is the ground that's the sense wire and this again positive so that i'm expecting to be with the fuses but not blown the card is out and that's a short and those are used traces so not just some random traces because sometimes on a gpus not 100 percent of them are used in here those are used for sure you can see traces going to them so i'm going to try and clean them and hope that the, the traces are not completely gone because if they are this is probably not working anymore needed to clean the traces with a thousand actually no a thousand eight hundred or a thousand six hundred grid sandpaper so really really fine and now 
we don't have corrosion but as you can see we do have um, a bit of the pads uh, missing uh, they were damaged by corrosion but hopefully they still conduct so clean this hole up clean also the one that uh, the connection that this goes into on the motherboard and start assembling starting to put everything back uh, in place put in the GPU cleaned this area you can still see where corrosion was on that so it was corrosion not only grime but nothing is shorting anymore at least I think so uh, yeah start to put this uh, in its place it's not going to be easy yeah I can well I managed to do it make sure that the wires for the Wi-Fi are not in the way get all of these wires on top of the motherboard that is the CPU bracket, it fell down from the board, so put that under the CPU, it needs to come out through these four holes. And then start uh, screwing this in. In most of my videos I show every screw where it uh, needs to go, but in this one I won't. Because when I opened this one up, I wasn't that careful what screw I take out from where. Because I learned something, on most boards you get a text what uh, di uh, metric diameter basically and what length you need to put in that hole so uh, most times if you go with that you figure it out uh, while doing it like here for example we also need a 2.5 times 4 so the same type as those um, if you do that same here for example most times you are quite okay and never uh, try to over tighten a screw that doesn't seem to be going in the hole because it's either the wrong screw or it's too long but if you keep this uh, all of this in mind yep you are good and another thing there are way too many screws on this laptop to show on video which goes where it's borderline insane put this board and this board in place still the same type of screw M2.5 times 4 so uh, yeah next I want to put this I'm not going to be changing the thermal paste because we don't know if this actually works anymore it, what was in here could have killed this it, corrosion there again then the short in here it's yeah but anyway if it works simple for me to come and change the paste if it doesn't well nothing changes what you need to make sure is to put these cables in the proper location otherwise this will not fully lower in place and yes also I'm not cleaning this because I will clean it when I change the thermal paste hopefully let's hope for the best and consider that I am coming back in into this laptop to clean uh, that and the thermal paste CPU and GPU screws are tight there is an order to them one hey come on two three four and it continues here up to eight the last one so start tighten a little bit a little bit in the order uh, of those numbers these are the first smaller screws m2 times uh, three i think so smaller diameter and also shorter plug this in plug this in so make sure everything is plugged in also put in the memory 16 gigs in this case so yeah let's continue snap this corner in kind of annoying but it clips in and it's held in place by uh, the hinge itself so that's next put this internally hinges are held in place with m2.5 times 6 so they are a bit longer than what we put on the motherboard for example and also we need two external screws for the hinges on this side and on the other side this stupid plate only goes in when the laptop is closed and it has four screws shorter ones don't forget to put this stupid thing in place with its screws and it needs to go ah man this is ah useless it needs to go into a slot so it's it's extremely tricky to get in here 
It's like they literally had a meeting. How can we make the most complex, simple part uh, out there? At this point, this comes in and you kind of slide it in there, in this area, and then lower it in place. And it should have, uh, from what I see, four flex cables that you need to plug uh, back in. Just a hint with all of these flex foils, make sure they are properly plugged in before pushing the white part to lock them in place. They are quite big compared to modern laptops, but they are quite difficult to connect correctly. So I'm not sure why this is. Maybe they used a bit lower quality connectors, although this one seems to be a different uh, um, type of plastic. Maybe this is a better quality. I don't know. They just don't connect that nicely. Anyway, there's that. So in theory, I have two for the keyboard itself and we should be done. But now I need to take a quick look and see if I have any screws that need to go in through this. But I don't think maybe only the clips on the side and three screws from underneath where the optical drive is. And now is the moment small things bite in the S. A screw should have gone through this plastic and then into the board. And I put it before, so I need to try and unscrew it somehow from the board, from underneath, and also put it through this plastic. It's gonna be fun. And it's done. And this is a long screw, it's a 6mm screw. Next step, put in the keyboard. To put in place, slide it in from the bottom, connect its cables into the required connectors, and then push it in and it will clip in, clip in place. And it's clipped in place and it has a bunch of clips on the top side, so make sure you push on it. Try to push mostly between the keys, but yeah. Let's flip this around and continue with those screws. Lots of them yet. Made good progress. Most of the screws on this part uh, are big ones. Six millimeter long. The huge ones are from the keyboard, but normally they are kept if they don't come out, so you shouldn't have issues with those. Uh, plugged in also the battery, this is plugged in, antennas have numbering on them and you can find the numbering also on the board. So make sure you plug the connectors uh, via those numbers, not in any other order. These two are, are short, four of them in here are short, are four millimeters, these three here are four millimeters, these are uh, even smaller diameter, these two. And uh, yeah, rest I think are from the screen, I hope. I don't see, apart from this where a 6mm should go, that I don't have. So either I put a 6mm somewhere where uh, a 4mm could have been enough, but I didn't feel any force, so it was, the hole was long enough. If uh, not, maybe one was missing from the start. I, I was not the first to open up this particular laptop, that's for sure. So now optical drive going back in and uh, I need to tighten its corresponding screw right here. Plugged in the SSD, the caddy was missing from the start, the RAM is on the other side, here I just cleaned so it's not shorting anymore, but you can still see where corrosion was. Uh, yeah, this again not clean and if only if this powers on, hopefully it will. So now let's turn it around and uh, give it a power without the monitor connected, the display actually. If it works, it's awesome. If not, well, we are at the same point that we started at. And it actually powered on directly, but will it allow, it, allow me to shut it off? Yes, it will. Let's quickly try to connect this. Hopefully no more shorts occur. And now let's see. Powering on, didn't see any light in there, but neither, actually, nah, we are still here. So is it the display or isn't it? Let me try to connect something via this and see if we get any video output. Power on, this is connected, this is getting white. No signal. Monitor goes to sleep. Um, how could I change to external? Maybe function and this. 
something did happen. This seemed to have shut off. Okay, we get an image. So it's working with an external display. Is it worth trying to get a display for this? Decided to get a display <laughs> attached. Let's see what it does. Hopefully it works. And it works. Yay! So it was only the display itself, which is awesome. Problem solved. Now let's put everything back together. One last test before closing the frame. Put all the screws in place, put the cable in place and everything is looking perfectly. So now uh, back with the frame and its uh, two bottom screws. To put this in place you literally start clipping it all around. That's all you need to do. Once it's clipped all around you put in the two tiny screws and then the covers onto them and that's about it. Couldn't manage to find one of the screws and then looking around hmm it's a red screw and it seems to have the same thread maybe I don't know it's you can see a lock next to it so something is locked uh, when you put this screw in but uh, I don't think we care about that this is more important than uh, whatever it locks uh, in there and problem solved tiny covers back in place and now I was doing one last check to make sure everything is working now I'm going to open it up to change the thermal paste I bought some MX4 should be way more than enough for uh, uh, what this laptop is going to do that red screw was meant to be used here so you can lock this so nobody could uh, literally unlock it but for me doesn't really matter <laughs> it was never used here so or maybe another screw was used there because there is some uh, Loctite anyway never mind not important uh, yeah let's continue opening it up remove again the screws for the keyboard the optical drive pop out the keyboard and then a bunch of screws to pop out the cover and do the thingy uh, internal battery error code. Yeah, we know that. Continue startup. The battery, the main battery, I think it's good or... No, internal. Yeah, the main battery is uh, is bad. Don't really care about that. I don't think this will ever be used on battery. If it's not plugged in, it doesn't give that error at all. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Maybe it will charge a little bit so we don't get the error anymore, but... That's not the purpose uh, of what we were doing here. Our purpose was to save this. And we did. So, yeah. Hope this video helps you. In which case, please give it a like. Check out my other videos. And as always, see you in the next one. And yes, we need to change uh, date and time. Because we unplugged the main battery. So, those are uh, not good. And a clip here. <coughs> Done. Thanks for watching and bye.